Hey everybody, this is Mr. G. Welcome to Family and Consumer Science Television. Today's topic is going to be equipment used in the kitchen. But before that, I want to give you a little bit of rhyme, something to, for you to think about, something to have some fun with. Here we go. This has to do with when you're eating. Okay, here we go. Feet on the floor, back straight. Never bow to your plate. Chew with your mouth closed. 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 Get your elbows off the table. This ain't no horse's stable, but a respectable dining room table. Thank you very much. Now we're going to do it fast. Feet on the floor. Back straight. Never bow to your plate. Feet on the floor. Back straight. Never bow to your plate. Get your elbows off the table. This ain't no horse's stable, but a respectable dining room table. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, all right. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do today is I'm going to have, I have about 20 items here on the table. They look beautiful. I'm going to read a description of them. And then I want you at home to perhaps um, yell out, uh, even though I won't hear you. I might hear you, though. Uh, I might hear you. Maybe, maybe so, maybe not. But uh, let's yell them out when you hear or see the equipment that I am describing to you. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Family Consumer Science Television, Mr. G, uh, for my students uh, students watching this, fabulous, glad you could make it to another round. And for those watching at home, I hope you join in and maybe have some fun. Here we go. Number one, I am used to brush butter or sauces on food. Okay, let's take a look over here. Everybody direct me. Am I warm, cold, warm? I'm getting warmer. Where is it, ladies and gentlemen? Where is it? Yeah, and there it is. A pastry brush used to put sauces on foods or butter. It's beautiful. These are wonderful items to have. Um, because the, the hairs on these will not pull out. So if you're brushing some a pastry or brushing something, these are a great brush. Pastry brush. There's our first answer. Let's hear it for the pastry brush, ladies and gentlemen. Woo-hoo, pastry brush. Okay, next one. I have several thin curved pieces of metal attached to a handle, and I am used for making pie crust. Okay. Used for making pie crust. Mmm. Mm. Used for making pie crust. This is called a pastry blender. Yellow. Yeah, I'm getting warmer. Where do you think it is? No, it's I'm I'm right over the top of it now. And boom! There it is. Pastry blender. Look at that beautiful pastry blender, ladies and gentlemen. Probably look like, you know, uh Looks like something you would, uh, but it's pastry blender. It's made to put butter and fats together when you're making a beautiful pie crust. It's made to kind of mix and stir your flour and butter around making pie crust. Let's hear it for the pastry blender, ladies and gentlemen. Yay, pastry blender. All right. Okay. Moving along, ladies and gentlemen, we have, I am several Oh, no, I'm sorry. I am inserted into the thickest part of meat or poultry to register its internal temperature. And as we are yelling warmer or colder, where do you think that is? It looks like, oh, uh, where is it? Oh, no. Uh, oh, you say it's here? Boom! There it is. Internal food thermometer. Internal food Thermometer. You put the eternal food thermometer into the thickest part of a chick piece of chicken, a casserole, veggie lasagna. No matter what you're making, you want to put it into the thickest part of the product. Because if the temperature is correct at the thickest part of your food you are eating, we can pretty much rest assured that the rest of the surrounding part of the food is at 165. And that's the magic number of the day. That's the Zoom uh, word of the day is 165 degrees safe internal temperature to eat your food. 
if either you're reheating it or cooking it, 165 degrees internal temperature. Let's say Mr. G's hand here was a big turkey bone. Look at the size of that turkey bone. Now, if I want to take the temperature of this, let's say I had it into the oven uh, at about uh, 350 degrees. And it's probably going to take a good 45 minutes to an hour for it to come up to temperature. Now, just because the outside of your food looks done doesn't necessarily mean it is done all the way through. So I would take the internal food thermometer. I would put it into the thickest part. I just don't want to put it just in the very top like that. I want to put it all the way into the thickest part of that piece of turkey or chicken or casserole. When it comes up to 165 degrees, that's the time when you push down on a piece of food or a piece of poultry or meat. The juice that comes out will be clear. Before it reaches 165, you'll see red corpuscles, if you would, or red or the blood still flowing. At 165 degrees internal temperature, that's the time when the juice runs clear and I would say 99% of your bacteria has now been uh, killed off and you are ready to eat. You cannot, take, you cannot take a piece of spoiled food or food that's gone bad and bring that up to temperature and eat it. When it once it's bad, you can't cook a spoiled piece out. Okay, we're talking about a fresh piece of casserole, meat, lasagna, 165 degrees. And people say, uh, can I put 165, can I put my oven on 165 degrees? and cook something, will it ever get to 165 degrees? The answer would be yes, of course it would. But it would probably take two or three hours at least. So a good temperature to always start with is between 325, 350 oven set on bake. And in about 45 minutes to an hour, your internal temperature will come up to 165 degrees. Very important tool. But if you don't have one at your house, Trust your eyes, okay? Trust your eyes. You can look, and if it's running red or there is any red, you know it's not done. Sometimes the internal th food thermometer may not be calibrated correctly or off by a few degrees. So always trust your eyes on that fabulous internal food thermometer. Next one we have, I am a four-sided metal tool used to shred great food in great foods such as cabbage cheese my personal favorite chocolate what is that here we go yell it out am i warm or cold what cold cold i hear cold from you guys cold oh yeah i'm getting a little warmer a little warmer you say a little warmer oh i see it over oh hot hot boom there it is greater this is a greater that's great, Mr. G. That's great. That's great. That's a great grater. Okay? Now, there are four sides to a grater, depending on what texture or what sort of shred you would want. I would probably use this side here if I was going to make potatoes. I may use this side here for a finer cut of cheese or chocolate. And there's just four different sides. And this would make what's called probably a... Uh, French a uh, potato chip cut here and you not, and you always want to lay it flat when you're using it obviously I would probably be over a mixing bowl and I would shave you don't, uh, you don't want to do that and when you get real close to the end don't be a hero throw that little piece out because you don't want to shred all the way down and maybe get a little bit of skin in there no good no good okay the grater that's great you know what the tomato said to the lettuce you better catch up okay moving along what does one, what do you call a deer with one eye one idea very good what do you call a deer with no eyes no idea moving along thank you for thank you for maybe laughing at that i have a variety of uses including snipping herbs trimming vegetables cutting meat dough and pizza okay so cold i hear you guys yelling cold cold we're warmer getting warmer 
I agree, I'm getting warmer. What? What? Uh, 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 boom! Kitchen shears. Kitchen shears are very similar to a regular scissor, but you want to have an own set of scissors to use when in the kitchen. I don't want to use the same kitchen shears or scissors that I use to cut glue with paper. This would be strictly used for cutting, let's say, um, if I have some spinach and I want to trim the, the stem off, if I want to cut some the, the fat or the skin off a of turkey, I would use one of these. Um, there's a lot of different uses that you're going to use in the kitchen with these, but you should have a separate set away from your arts and crafts set. Kitchen shears, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for it. Oh, okay. What do you call a cow with two legs? That would, of course, be lean beef. Thank you very much. Lean beef. Moving on. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay. I am used for scraping bowls and saucepans and folding one ingredient in to another. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. Da, da 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 Scraping the side of mixing bowls, folding things together like chocolate and whipped cream. I'm hearing, no, I'm cold over here, still cold. What do you got? Warmer? I hear you saying warmer. Warmer. Good, good. Oh, oh, warm. Yeah, you got it. Kitchen scraper. Or a bowl scraper as you can see there's a nice little curve here and if this was a complete I would be able to if this was a wasn't a colander but we can kind of use it and the reason it has that on the side because it nice and goes right in the side and I can and I can combine some nice delicate materials with this okay beautiful you might have one of these at home that looks a little melted because somebody might have taken this and decided to make some uh, scrambled eggs or some eggs with it. These are not meant for any heat, okay? They're meant for getting the side of your utensil or your bowl that you are scraping with to get it off the sides, like cake mixes and batters and that much, okay? Bowl scraper, boom. Do I have any more jokes right now? Um, no, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Oh, I'm on a roll with butter. Hmm, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am used to remove the outer surface of fruits and vegetables. I am used to remove the outer surface of fruits and vegetables. Let me hear you. Let me hear you, class. People at home, am I close? Am I close? You say over here a little, a little more. Oh, 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 oh! There it is. A peeler, a vegetable peeler, fruit peeler. We're just going to go this as a food peeler, okay? Food peeler. Great to take skin off of uh, uh, carrots. And what I found one interesting little fact that I have. Um, when you peel, you can peel celery. And if you peel celery and get that first layer off, it is not as stringy. And uh, people that know that, I'm not a super celery fan, but um, I do like it a little more now because I peel, when I peel that celery skin off that first layer and you crunch into it, it's not as stringy. And um, it's the interesting thing, a little factoid about celery is, um, celery, the more celery you eat, you use more energy eating the celery and calories than you get from the celery. So you can eat as much celery as you want and you will never, you'll actually um, lose weight. It's very good for you. Celery has a lot of good nutrients in it, has a lot of good vitamins in it, but the action of you eating it, you're expelling more energy and more calories than you're taking in. That's why celery is so good for just sitting there and munching away on it. You can munch away all day on celery and you won't gain any weight and you'll get nutrients. Okay, little factoid for you. The thing is clearing out. Here's another one for you. 
Ah, I am made of glass or plastic, and I am used for measuring ingredients such as flour and sugar. Okay, here we go. So it's something we measure with. Oh, it's freezing over here. No, I, no, nothing's been happening over here. Boy, I hope you get over here. Right, you get warmer, a little warmer. Oh, uh, oh, uh, what? Cold, cold. Oh, look at these shiny things. Oh, here we go. These are called dry measuring cups. And there are four that usually come in a set. A one cup, which is here, this one. And as we know, there are eight ounces in a cup. And how we would go about measuring with this, if say I wanted some flour, I would scoop in and then I would take a flat surface and I would go over the top of it so it's nice and level. Eight ounces in a cup. So yell it out, how many ounces then would be in a half a cup? Four, good answer person in the back. How many ounces would be in a third of a cup? Mmm, good question. How many ounces are in a fourth of a cup? Anyone? It'd be two ounces in a fourth of a cup. And I think a third of a cup would be what? 3.33333, I believe. But that's your basic set. One cup, half a cup, third of a cup, and a fourth of a cup. Dry measuring cups. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Moving along at a brisk pace, I am, uh, I am used to measure small amounts of ingredients. Since we did get cups... We're probably looking for spoons and boom. Ooh, there we go. Measuring spoons. They usually come in a set of four. And we have a tablespoon that, as we know from our studies, and if you don't know, let's review. There is a half a fluid ounce in a tablespoon. Half a fluid ounce. There are three teaspoons equal one tablespoon. Interesting, interesting. This is a half a teaspoon and this is a fourth of a teaspoon. And those are your basic set of measuring spoons. And you would do that and you would measure the same way. You would dip in, okay, go across the top and make sure it's nice and level. If you have a recipe that says one, ta one teaspoon of salt and you weren't paying attention and you took the teaspoon of salt and you put a big scoop of salt in there, over, you know, something over the top and you make what product you're going to be, since salt is an anti-rising agent that works against the baking soda and baking powder in a recipe, your uh, cupcake or your cake will not rise because there's too much salt in it. The opposite goes for if it calls for baking powder or baking soda, and you put too much of that in, it will rise and it will taste, it will rise too much and probably fall into itself and be quite chalky. Dry measuring spoons. Ah, da -da -ba -ba. I am used to beat, blend, and incorporate air into foods, ladies and gentlemen. Into foods. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. I feel you. Right here. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen, students, viewers, a whisk. A whisk. You hold, you don't hold a whisk like this. You hold it like almost like you're holding a pencil. Okay? And that's going to get a lot of action as you're trying to incorporate air into say maybe I put heavy cream in here and if I whip this up and get really get it going you usually do it like a figure eight pattern but you really want to get that going okay your whipped cream will slowly thicken up into whipped cream I mean your heavy cream would slowly thicken up you can use this for sauces it's a great tool to have for batters this is called a whisk a whisk <laughs> We're doing great, guys. Let's keep going. Uh, I am used to drain fruits, vegetables, and pasta. Now, there's two different things here. When I see the word pasta, 
I am going to go to what is called a strainer. Okay, this is a strainer. All right, and they also have what's called a colander. Now, a colander has circles in the bottom of it, a little bit bigger than the strainer. Could I strain my pasta in this? Absolutely. Some of the pasta might hang out the sides, but you could easily do it if you don't have a strainer. If you have both, a strainer will work much better with a spaghetti. If I'm tossing my vegetables um, or something larger, I would break out the colander, okay? Whenever, but whenever you see the word pasta, you know, the, pro the recipe's probably calling for a strainer. And this would be a colander. Just getting up. How are we doing on time, Kyle? About eight minutes. Eight minutes. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. I'm used to cut and chop foods. Boom. There's only one knife up here. This is called a chef's knife. This is called a chef's knife. And how you do a knife, you put it over the top. It has a knife curved to it. And you let, and you always keep your hands on top. And you let the knife do the work. Chef's knife. If you're only going to get one knife in the kitchen, a chef knife will pretty much do it all. Okay? <laughs> Moving along. Uh, bu -bu -bu. I'm used on countertops when chopping food. Oh, it's hiding underneath there. <laughs> Cutting board. Great thing to have. Cutting board will protect not only your food, your, your, your surface underneath, but you control the cleanliness of this. You never want to chop um chicken on a cutting board and then take that raw chicken off and put vegetables on it that's called cross contamination so you should use a couple different cutting boards as you're going through your cooking process or you can use the same one but let's make sure that you wash and sanitize the cutting board when you're switching food items such as meat poultry vegetables fruit that all should be clean and sanitized before you add and start using it for another ingredient. Um, uh, I am used to separate liquids from solids. That's when we're going to go back to the colander, as we recently spoke of. I'm used to blend dry ingredients and to remove lumps from powder and sugar. Finally, we can go over here. Oh, this baby is called a sifter. And in a sifter, there is a screen at the bottom of it. I don't know if you can see how that screen is, but it is concave, I believe. Concave meaning it's there's a, it goes like this. And all this simply is, you turn this, you have flour into it, and flour usually comes compact at the store. And you lightly go back and forth, and it will aerate and make it look like a nice fluffy snow, and it will aerate and make your product look better. Little important thing to kind of remember if your recipe says sift the flour, sift the flour. If it doesn't say anything, don't sift the flour. Some recipes you need to sift, and some you do not. Uh, I am I consist of a small pan that fits into a larger pan. I am used to cook foods gently. Boom. Double boiler. Double boiler. If I want to maybe melt some chocolate, I would fill this up to about here. So with water, you don't want this to touch the water. It goes in nicely. And what happens is the steam will help the chocolate or the cheese not stick to the bottom of this as you're going through the melting process. If you do not have a double boiler, you could easily take one size saucepan and a smaller one and hold it like that get some water on maybe a third of the way up and you could go ahead and melt your chocolate or cheese or whatever you're melting and, and it likes steam so it will keep it moist and will keep it very uh so it doesn't stick up or um harden up on you okay good 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 job guys good job mr g uh i'm used for par boiling foods or for cooked foods in a small amount of fat saute pan this is a nine inch saute pan okay it's beautiful it has black on the bottom of it that's the non-stick you might be able to get some 
without um, the non-stick. Some chefs and some cooks like cooking with this. Some prefer to use the non-stick ones. A nice heavy pan. And remember, when it's touching the burner, that's called conduction. Okay? So if something's getting hot and it's starting to burn, don't be afraid to lift it up and let it cool down and calm down and lower down your temperature on your oven before you bring it back down and you're always constantly turning. This is a big, this is big. Saute pan. Beautiful. We're emptying out. I am a skillet with no size. You don't have that. I'm a flat sheet of metal and I'm used for making cookies. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the cookie sheet. There are two different kinds. This old school one here is called a jelly roll pan. Just because, let's say you're cooking something, a jelly roll or some chicken or something that oozes out liquid, I wouldn't want to make it on this because anything that's oozing out will fall off and go onto the burner or go into the oven and you'll get quite a uh, smoke reaction if anything is hitting it. A cookie sheet, which this is, doesn't have any sides. Cookies usually will not ooze out anything unless you're making like a jelly cookie but for your standard cookies this is the way to go because you can also gently take them off like that so cookie sheet jelly roll pan two minutes uh, i am a flap i am an oblong pan with round depressions don't be depressed depressions cupcake cupcake depressions cupcake pan all right, I got a few left things here left. Let's go over them real fast. This is called a masher. Mash, mash, mash. I got some nice boiled potatoes. Mash, 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 mash. Masher. Slotted spoon. Very nice. I want that good stuff out of that soup. Oh, I want that good stuff. Break out the slotted spoon. Everyone knows Mr. Spatula. Say hello, Mr. Spatula. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, I'm a spatula. Spoon. We all love our spoons. Cake cutter, pie cutter. Very impressive. Liquid measuring cups. I don't want to... If it, so... <laughs> if it calls for eight ounces of water or eight ounces of milk... I, w and this, I wouldn't want to put eight ounces of milk in here because it's come right up to the top and you may spill, spill, spill. Oh no, that would be awful. This is why this is for dry ingredients. <coughs> Wet ingredients, the eight ounces right there. So if it asks for a cup, it's still giving, oh, about two inches, maybe an inch on top if I fill it up to there, which will make it good for me to maybe to walk around with, put down and maneuver without it spilling. Tongs to get into something hot and pull them out. Corn on the cob, chicken. Oh, I would love to get some corn on the cob now. A larger one of those. Large saucepan. Small saucepan. Another saucepan that just came along for the ride. Pizza cutter. Get your elbows off the table. This ain't no horse's stable but a respectable dining room table. Feet on the floor, back straight, never bow over your plate, chew with your mouth closed. You guys have been awesome. This half an hour went by super fast. I hope you had a good time here on Family and Consumer Science Television. I'm Mr. G. For my students taking this online or in class, very proud of you. For those people just watching, I hope you got something out of this show. We'll see my students on Google Classroom shortly. And more than likely, there will be a little quiz about this that I just went over. Just to keep you guys honest. Cook something. Be careful when you're cooking. Don't walk away from your food when you're cooking it. Enjoy your utensils. This is Mr. G. Have a great, great afternoon. And we'll see you soon.